Hi everyone, this is Kara Newman and this is the Saturday, Saturday Hukalo webinar. Today we have a very, very special guest. We have Roxanne Swainhart who will be here channeling. It's, it's a joy to have Roxanne because I haven't seen her in so long, so I'm so excited. Uh, just uh, today in the room we have Marlene, we have Colster. Yeah, that's we my have boyfriend. Also, oh, okay, perfect. Tommy, we have Tommy, um, Ava, mm -hmm. Don, and Christine. And then just before we get started, just to let you know, if you would like to be part of the Human Colony uh, webinars, then you can always uh, join the Human Colony website and you can write in and you'll be able to sit in the room if you become a member. You can go to hucolo.org, that's H-U-C-O-L-O.org. And also to tell you, coming up there is a human colony workshop that will be taking place in Sedona. It's their second retreat. It's called the Sedona Ascension Workshop. It's February 1st through the 6th, 2018. It'll be taught by Jim and Max and Channeled Beings. Jonathan uh, C. Martin, who's a Yael channeler, will also be there joining for the workshops. It's for five nights, it's $575. And there's an extra night you can come and an extra night after if you just want to hang out with everybody. But please go to the hucolo.org workshop, uh, hucolo.org website and click workshop. So, so before we get started. Yeah. So let me switch it to you. There she is. The lovely, talented, always a pleasure, Roxanne Swinghart. Hey. Always. So Hiya, honey. <laughs> Hiya. Always a good so do you... Do you want to do a blessing before we start or have someone do a blessing? You can do it. That would be nice. I can do it. Okay. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're okay. that awesome. Okay. Thank you. I'll switch back to you. All right. Um, okay. I just, if everyone will just take a deep breath just to calm my energy because I'm so excited right now, Roxanne's here. We'll just take a deep breath in and we'll ohm together just to change the energy. Just take a deep breath. Oh. Just may the information that comes through, as it always does, answer the questions and the longings of people's hearts and open them up to the better knowing of themselves and the growth of their own expansion. Namaste. Namaste. Beautiful. All right. Are we ready? Okay. We're ready to go? We're ready. Are we on YouTube too? Isn't this so We're on YouTube. Ready on YouTube. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Lilypad and Influit42. Lily's music. there. They Hello, say hi. Lily hi. <laughs> <laughs> we get to play together this way. How awesome are we? We're all excited. I'm excited. All right. Uh, yeah, let's okay. get going. And uh, right. welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Here we go. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Probably Osiphius will come in first, and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> True that. Greetings to you all. Osiphius here. We bid you all a good day. Listen to the blessing again. Open up your ideas, the heart, longing. Hmm? Go back and listen. The idea of the blessing, what does it say? What does it tell you? Hmm? It tells you your heart longing. You have a distraction, maybe you don't notice it. It's called the thinking mind, the mind that knows itself. And you choosing your truth about the interaction that keeps you safe and harmonious with what you call your world, security and living up to the standards of imagery of others. But I dare say the heart speaks different. I know where I live that. I live no quorums of other than I am. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't notice. Maybe you can journey into a different world. It is written in the idea, Seth said it several times, your biblical ideas have many influential ideas of separation, but it also has many ideas of understanding, deep in hmm, comprehension of 
the universe within that structure, no matter how much they have edited and deleted certain items. It still sings to the heart in some manners if it's a calling, but do not use it as a fashion that it was mistaken for, a way to live, a direction, a leader. It was here, the idea, the kingdom of heaven lies within. You are the M that I am. I am. This is what you are. These idea phrases open up the, let's say, the logical mind to question and doubt. But the influential hmm, is quickly noticed because the controversy lies on both sides. How about the inside? The honest self, the discernment that you were birthed and born with, that is coveted, uh, let's say, by no influence. It only knows its heart, you, for that is what you are. You have been chosen to exist, creation. Hmm? Not just the idea entity in the eyes that you call yourself in your human body. Hmm? But what about the computer itself? What about the camera, the water you drink, the coffee? The chair you sit upon. This is creation. It is not an innate object. It is aware. It understands itself at some vibrational level of interaction. So everything is alive and everything is creation. And you're part of that. And this you are blessed. And I dare say this is all the blessings you'll ever need going forward. Because you have been given existence. Give thanks and move on. In what way? To discover. You've been a god for billions and billions of years, times infinity, but that gives you an idea. What does that mean to be God? Well, it's what you're doing today, right now. Your entire life has been because you are God. Your entire life will be because you are God. These are your ideas on how to interpret your reality through the construct of your mind, your particular journey in the focus of a now. And of course, you have these lives over here that are now and these lives over here that are now and back then and forward in time, but truly just now from a perspective. You have no, let's say, bother to those lives. That's not your concern. That's a distraction. Today, now is your life. Sink yourself, immerse yourself into the granted idea, the gift you've given yourself to experience separation from a particular point of view, that of disconnected, not knowing it's part of the whole, and honor, truly, to do, let's say, for yourself. You've been God for a billion years, once again. How about having a little fun? Hmm? Not being God. Does the world seem treacherous? Are you having to deal with it? See, that's the fun part. Because outside of that, and whatever density or realm or incarnation you're playing, you're connected. So it is fun there because polarity is, exists here. So the fun is you get to be polarized in your world. You get to call people names, asshole, dick. You get to judge others for their atrocity. Look what he did to that. He should be punished. You get to do that because you are God today, now, here. That is the gift you've given yourself. It does not exist outside of the idea of separation. And within separation, you have discovered something, an unlimited world called limitation. So you can go on forever in whatever way you want to have it go on. Because you are the experiencer and the choice of the experience. You just had forgotten how to choose in an idea of heart. You're very good at choosing the mind, the one that measures and said, oh, this is best for me. That is you. Anything that is an object. Anything objective is birthed from within, the subjective universe. The I am that you are, that you claim every day by waking up and venturing into the lost, the forgotten gods, truly. So in this idea, we offer this today. Understand the gift you've given yourself you are not under idea of any karma or any scrutiny. There's no finish line. There sure as hell isn't any gold stars at the end, and there's no pearly gates. What there is is you, God, remembering itself wholly upon the day that you choose to exit or choose to wake fully. It is all up to you now. 
This is the Ascension idea timeline you have chosen to be on today. There are many other timelines you pop in and out with different idea of personalities, constructs with different ideas of memories. Some of you are now in this life and now in that life, but now you are here. So this idea of Ascension is to wake the species, but let's not wake them up like an alarm clock. That's annoying. You want to hit it and knock it across the room. It's not pleasant to be woken up from your slumber. So look around at the innocent, everybody. See what you see. Do you see pain, sorrow, and suffering? If you do, then you choose to see them in that light, and that is the vibration you offer and extend to them as a choice. But I dare say, masters, light workers, if you want to be that, would offer light and allow them to play in their slumber. See, they are innocent. You, entities of awoken, are innocence lost. So what can you do for yourself today? Just shed the light. It is so much more beautiful to wake up to the morning light rather than an alarm clock when it is still dark. Hmm? I bet many of you have woken that idea, and it's just no fun. So understand that your light is enough to wake up, but you must represent it. You cannot represent the judgment. You cannot sustain the same vibration. You have two tacticians, masters of vibration, that were upon this idea Earth. Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein. And they both said, if you want to understand reality, think in terms of frequency and vibration. So if you are the constitution of vibration, then understand this. Your words, your definitions, your approach to life, the way you view things, your relationship reality is vibration. And to understand that, you can see through your own experimentations, if you choose that mastery, to start to change your vibration and watch how the versions of the people around you start to change. You allow them to skin their hearts and skin their knees. You don't, let's say, keep them safe or tell them anything is wrong. You just let them play, for God's sakes, because we're in a playground. Do not forget, hmm, unless ye are arrogant, that you are forever. And this is just a blink of an eye, a whim, swooping into an idea and swooping right back out, as you have always done. So these innocents will wake up to the light, not to the preacherhood, the clanging bell of the same old song and dance, fear, threats. You must obey. You must surrender. You must use these rituals to become some mighty idea God. Well, we've been at it for 17 billion years, and no God has shown up in the idea of objective. Gods are internal, known to the self of expression. It doesn't have an idea of a mantra. Gods are expressed in relationship to reality of authentic. And then the mantra becomes light, not the clanging alarm clock, I dare say. Do not scope yourself in an idea of an image. Do not stand on a soapbox and be that. Become the harmony of the universe have you always been, as you've always been. You just didn't remember. And by the way, the entire universe is already in harmony. It's you that are distorting it that you get to because you can, because the harmony of you can be out of harmony. It is not balance. It is not alignment. It is your authentic to become one again. That is your journey if you choose it to be. And whatever way you saunter or swim down the hallway of life, would be the expression of the weaving tapestries of the eternal now that you now are realized. It's just a game. It's a story. It's your next now. It doesn't have meaning. It doesn't have a beginning. It doesn't have an end. It just is what you are. So now maybe there's a glint, a light, something that sheds and says, you know what? I'm just here to experience my worthiness return to me through my choice, despite the ideas of the rhetorics of the asleep, despite the ideas of the hmm, egoic mind saying, you must, you have to, or you will disappoint or fail in this idea. Those are polarities. Those are distractions. The heart sings a louder, a brighter song. It says, come with me. It says, trust. It says, be naked and vulnerable to the universe because the universe is you. And there's never been a threat to the universe ever except the one that you interpret as a threat. Why? Because you're God, because you can.
because you forgot, because you covet. And now you remember. It is truly up to you. Journey well, entities. I shall bring in the next idea. Thank you very much. Hey, darling, this is Sylvester. How are you? Hi, Sylvester. Hi. I don't think I've ever spoken to you directly, but it's really nice to well, meet you. Well, damn, it's an honor, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor for me, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> There's a couple damn, of questions. Was, wasn't that kick ass by O? Very beautiful, yeah. That was awesome, man. I mean, you just summed it right up for you. But now yeah. we're going to talk about the details and get into the nitty gritty. Oh. <laughs> All right, we got questions? <laughs> Let's play. We do have some questions. All right. Well, Christine has a question. Well, Christine, do you want to ask your question directly? Yes, if you don't mind. Can you? I don't mind. Of course. Go ahead. Um, I had a bird who wasn't feeling very well. I have birds. And Wonderful. One, and um, the injury, I think, was the foot when I noticed it, and I sent Reke to it um, that it not suffer. And one of my ah. beta fish who Time right Ooh, there. I'm going to hang on. It suffering. Is that your choice? It looked like it, it was in pain. Well, that's fine. Let it be its pain. For God's sakes, why do you have to make everything so okay. perfect when you have no idea? You have no idea what that bird is feeling. See, it's experiencing. And this is going to get a little rude for humanity, but we're going to give you the idea on how harmonistic the idea of the universe is. Do you understand when a cow gets slaughtered, it is honored to be eaten? I send blessings to it. Oh, great. Thank That's you, great. It's a sacrifice. It's not a sacrifice. It's an experience. See, sacrifice is a human idea. That's okay. human. That's the polarity of measurement. Uh -huh. So if you understand that your bird that chose to, in its idea reality of probabilities, chose to have a foot ailment, leave it alone. Send it Reiki, but do not see it suffering, because that's the idea of Osiphius. Listen very closely, class. Osiphius said this, when you are that vibration approached to the moment and you are relating, that bird is feeling that you are seeing it as suffering, so it only enhances its reality. So in other words, if you have a friend that goes, oh, you're suffering, and you're going, wow, man, that's too bad, and you become the sympathetic card, you sustain the vibration instead of giving that idea one thing, a chance to be light. Take okay. it as you will. Make sense? Yep. Beautiful. Keep going about the beta now. <laughs> so my beta, it grew really enormous, about two inches. Um, he was looking like he was ailing and um i sent reke to him too and um that whatever happens happens um perfect me it's how just is the beta now dead he died the same same day as the bird yes i have and other now it's gone yeah well it's yeah but see see here's what here's what you did you gave a beta uh, an opportunity to be a beta. You allowed yes. it to be created in your reality to experience. See, that beta is not an idea of a beta. It's a consciousness that's exploring reality, much like you could have been a beta or a piece of dirt that was dug up or a seed that was crapped out of a bird that was eaten that birthed itself into the mighty oak one day. See, this is what the creation is. Creation is everything. It's uh -huh. the continuation of a point of view. So you honored the beta by what? giving it a chance to live within you in your vibration of harmony. So yes. now it's on to its next adventure. Do not mourn the sorrow because there is no sorrow in reality. There is only the everlasting ongoing of the now, existence. You can never not exist because that's non-existence. You're always existing as well as everything around you. So understand that your idea beta is on to its next adventure. It looks like it's chosen to be an angelfish. <laughs> Okay. I was just wondering if I should, if I was going through the process, their process, right? So, okay. You, you were perfect. See, you're adventuring, but don't make the process an idea of measurement to be scaled in success or failure. Okay. So you're not there to save. You can't save. Go to a hospital. Go to uh -huh. a hospital and go to the death idea of people that are going to die. Okay? Go. And see how many you can save. 
you can't know how many zero you know why because it's choice yeah no one's ever going to save you from leaving you choose always 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 got me yeah so um booyah when <laughs> so when friends get sick or ill or something to that effect like one friend is going to go through a mastectomy and so sending her reke is this if the intention if the intention if the approach behind the reke is not that of sorrowful it's that uh -huh. of an offering right yes, it okay. is. So, someone's hungry but they're not going to die you offer them an apple your approach is hey if you want this you want an apple here you go so your thing uh -huh. is not this is oh i got to give this to you it's going to save your life do you understand uh -huh. now the relationship with that object of reiki If you're going, oh, she needs this healing, then you're becoming the idea of the same vibration as she heals. Tell me, do you understand how the Christ conscience healed? The Christ conscience never actually saw the idea of person as lepers or blind or, you know, ailed in any way. They saw them as whole. The Christ conscience, all three of them, saw them as whole. Okay. Okay? So you see them as whole and offer your wares, which is your Reiki. It's love. Okay, but if it's an idea of healing, understand one thing no one, no healer ever heals. It's the idea they offer, and the patients choose to be healed. That's the idea of a placebo, it's the easiest thing to see. It's the doctor believes, the patient believes, and hey, it works because the body's in the light. It's light, it's not physical, it's an idea, and it's all controlled with the approach here. Everything is right here. Okay, so, so you offer that vibration of Reiki to the one that's receiving a mastectomy, then you offer love, and that's it. You leave it alone. But if it starts to become an attentional idea and you focus on it in the now, in the now, in the now, whether it's going to heal or not, and then it becomes the idea of a sustaining vibration of your current self that that person, for some reason, is ill. They're experiencing. They're experiencing. Make sense? It does. So you let you let them be. You let them... <laughs> Biffin. You let them understand, yes. You let them live because they're gods. Relax. No one goes anywhere except now. <laughs> and that's forever. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Awesome. Don has a question. Do you want to ask it in person, Don? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can do okay, that. Okay, perfect. Okay. Great. Okay, I was just gonna add, wonder if Roxanne would like to ch try channeling Arya. Uh, Who's Arya? Arya? Arya is the planetary consciousness that will re be replacing Gaia on this planet. Oh, well, this planet's not going to be here anymore. I have a different point of view. You want to hear mine? Go right ahead. All right. So the idea of Gaia has hosted five species of ascension. This is the last one. Okay, and she's been in this idea, Logos, the solar system, for a very long time. She's ready to go to fourth density. So there's not going to be a new Earth. There's going to be another Earth, and that other Earth is called Venusia. So is that who you're claiming the idea of Aria is? Or you think it's going to be another Earth? I believe it's going to be, well, I've explained this to Gaia. Uh, it'll be, she'll be, okay, she'll be advancing to a, another world. She's going fourth density, right? Yes. She's going to host Homo, Homo Galacticus. Yes. But uh, the new Earth would have another consciousness, and that consciousness oh, yeah. is Arya. I haven't heard that. Okay. But, hey, play that way you are. And the idea of, let's say, this idea being the uh, uh, connected with the logos and everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. So right now, the Hathors have been terraforming your planet, uh, uh, Venusia, or Venus. We call it Venusia. So Venus, they've been terraforming it. Uh, and, and once the ascension occurs, we've got about another 1,000 years left of your periodic time of measurement. And then what will happen is uh, Venus will, let's say, shift its orbital path into the current idea, and Earth will not be in the physical realm, and Gaia will go on to our next idea, and, and then... Uh, Venusia will be the next humans 
if you will, the next species. Um, and it's going to be an attribute of separation, but there's going to be a couple different angles because you can never repeat the same thing knowing. You, you, you uh, always have to, um, let's say, the game always uh, evolves, evolves in some, yeah, some idea. So that's the I take. I've never heard of Aria, so um, our pardons. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a question from in the chat from someone named Cami, and the question is, and it's a good question because it, it, it'll be nice to have your perspective. Oh, it's a simple question. True. Yay. Okay. The, mm -hmm. It's the concept of vibration is ah. used to explain almost everything or anything. Yes. So what is it actually in scientific okay. terms? Great. I love it. Yeah. So now question, we get to right? Yeah. We get to explore. All right. Understand that you have an event horizon. You understand it in a representation, and that representation would be called the black hole. It's where the idea of the non-physical bursts itself into the physical through what you guys call dark matter or gravity. You guys are still playing around with a whole bunch of things to try to figure it out with your known reference points. Perfect. I'm not going to give you all the clues to that because that would ruin the game. You guys are playing this. Go ahead and discover. But what I can tell you is you vibrate light okay now where lights birth from there's another path and this is a whole nother class behind light there's thought and you're the idea behind thought you're the thought behind thought so that gets a little nothingness doesn't have substance but yet it does it's really cool it's really cool what we are i'm telling you <laughs> all right so so what happens is your creator understanding itself as vibration, a thought, okay? And we'll just start with thought because that's what you can relate to in a reference. Perfect. So that thought understands itself in vibration. You have the ability as a creator universe, your idea point of view. So stop. what was her name? Tammy out there? Karen? It was Cammy, almost. Cammy, not Tammy. Cammy. Okay. Yeah. Hi, baby. So look around. Okay. Cammy, out there, spin around in your chair and look around and watch how your universe is being created no matter where you look. But wherever you're not look, it's not there. Okay. So wherever you're thinking is there is not there until you get there in the now. And that's when the world is literally created that fast at the speed of light, actually faster than the speed of light, because that's the way you guys can measure it in physicality. But of course, light's much faster than that. All right. So what happens is that that vibration that you are takes consciousness, creation in itself, the vast pool of awareness, and shifts it. It's co-creation, so it's literally you, so you're not asking light to be light. It's what is. There's no, to, get, to look at it from a non-distraction point of view of polarity, uh, no one ever says no in creation. There you go. That's good. So what you do is you take idea of vibration. And you slow it down. Slow it, slow it, slow it, slow it, slow it. And then it becomes the idea of physical light. Now, in order to see physical light, you must have the senses to interpret physical light. That's what this wonderful brain of yours does. It takes its idea of its reality and interprets it through the idea of the little electrons, the going over your little idea, jumping neurons and this little telling the brain what you see. Hmm? Hear, touch, smell, no, that, that kind of thing. Okay, so you start to experience light that is slow, that creates the idea of gross matter, G R O S S, big fat matter, and you slow it down and slow it down, just like on a radio. And the idea, you fine tune it, hmm? you fine tune it down and down and down and then it becomes vibratory slower and slower and slower and then it becomes your reality so when we talk about terms of vibrations when you change your vibration because you are the filter of the originator listen very closely to that again okay i'm going to echo the idea of bashar because he nailed it on this one he's so he's so cool little guy i love him so you got this idea up here that's his originator Okay, that's the conceiving mind. Then you have this other mind down here. Okay, that's your receiving mind. That's the physical brain that takes all the idea of vibration and interprets it into a vibrational, much like a radio, scrambles it and unscrambles it and gives you the idea of sound, perfect words in a television. Same idea. So this idea of receiving mind translates all the vibration that's coming in from consciousness, whole, you, 
the big boy up here. Ah, okay, so that idea is translating, re receiving mind, and then you get to see it in your point of view. Now that's the perceiving mind. Okay, that's the way you interpret vibration. So when your approach to vibration is that of the same constitution of separation, then it changes the vibration and sustains it in that fashion. See, no vibration comes to you. It's interpreted by you. People are saying, oh, how did I, let's say, create this fear or negativity? It's not negativity. That's how you're seeing that vibration. You're interpreting a neutral universe as negative. So that's the vibration. So now here's the here's the good part. Okay, here we go. So your relationship, Seth 101, relationship with that idea, okay, with that is either an idea of allowance or it's an idea of structure. The structure is coveting systems. Hmm? The structure is an idea of a coveting system that measures in polarity scales because it only knows good and bad. Love and fear, hmm? by the way, the opposite of hate is indifference. That's a good way to see things indifferently. Anyways, I have a video on it. Check it out. <laughs> so if you're looking at this idea and your relationship with that idea is structured through a coveting belief that says, this is my truth, and it has any constitution of judgment, of a feeling of separation, safe harbor for you, arrogance for you, I'm better than that, that's not right, any of those vibrations, then you only sustain, you take that beautiful neutral idea of all-encompassing unconditional vibration and you change it vibrationally into your interpretation, which then is what? Your experience. That's what it is. So your experience becomes that of interpreted of vibration. So when you change your approach to life, Accept all that is, because there's nothing you can do about it. Then, this idea starts to peel away. All the masterful ideas of your belief systems that you were taught, that you were schooled. You, you see, you guys were unknown, and the teachers and the parents and the society crammed down your throat <clears throat> the known. And that's the way it was. It's not their fault. They're innocent. They're separated. They're gods being the same thing you are, lost. Trying to figure out a game of life. Awesome. Okay. So so you can't blame them. You can't get upset at them. You just got to say, cool, I'm done with that. And go on about your nows. And your vibrational approach to the moment, something negative comes in your life. <clears throat> you don't have enough money to pay a bill. Or someone that was, uh, let's say, tore your heart out comes back into your life. Because you, you turned them into a dependency, a vibration, a dependency, and they betrayed you. And then they crush your little heart. And then all of a sudden you're mad and you have that living rent-free in your mind for however long you hold that revenge. Okay? So that vibration, that approach to it, right, that mm, sustains it. But if you accept it, say, I don't have enough money for the bill. Oh, this guy's back in my life. doesn't mean you need to engage it. You don't have to deal with things. All you do is interpret, follow your join them out now, and I guarantee you, God will show up. God will show up. And what do I mean by that? I mean the unknown, the vibration that is unconditional that you haven't experienced. See, people go, hey, let's go over here. No, that might happen, that might happen, that might happen, but it might not be worth my time. It might be a waste of time. I can't do that. I can't. And you take your worthiness and you squash it with the containment of the vibration that you currently are. And therefore, the next idea field is going to be on that same vibrational level. There's no unknown. You're always going to get the same thing. You guys are repeating. If your life hasn't changed because you're choosing to keep your vibration the same, Einstein said it. Reality is made out of vibration. You want to change your reality, change your vibration. But you have to change it with here. Not a construct, not a way, not a mantra, not putting in front of the mirror, I am wealthy, I am rich, I have a big house, I am successful. No, that's convincing from a lackful standpoint. You got to know this self that is lack. I forgot, not my fault. 
I suck at this idea. I can't figure it out. I'm not smart enough to because I'm using compressed logic from an ideology of my current experience on Earth. So I'm taking that to try to figure out the entire collective. Pass. So I'll give in to myself, the whole. And that's when God shows up. The unknown God that just whispers to you and speaks to you all the time. That's the voice inside. It's your internal self that says, I am God. Hey, it's me. Do you want to connect to your whole self? Hey, whole self. Listen to the voice. Hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. Good. What's your name? Call me this. Call me that. And start to have a conversation and open yourself up to the inside of yourself through the imagination that was thwarted as a childhood. Hey, you got a big imagination. But as soon as you got with real life, then all of a sudden your imagination say, you got to stop being in your head in the clouds. Get down to reality. So you will learn and taught to, let's say, disband your own imagination, which is the voice inside. You can't trust it. Oh, it's got evil thoughts. Well, tell me a, get, tell me an idea. Tell me a thought that belongs not to God because all is existence. That's your God. It's only you, the coveter, the receiving mind, taking that through a perception filter of your belief systems and saying it's evil. It's all you. That's a big responsibility. Big. It's a huge responsibility. And it's scary for people to say, my God, I really am that. When you get really close to being God, most people shy away because it means everything is coming truth. Because most people are like a dog chasing a car. Ruh, 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 ruh. And when they catch the car, they don't know what to fucking do with it. They just stop. You want to keep your life of the distraction of, oh, yeah, this is wrong and this is right and this is wrong. But when all of a sudden you just let go, then the only thing that can happen is the unfiltered you is starting to come home. And you consciously start to remember, holy shit, I am God. There's nothing you would need to do. We, we've been saying, Osipius has been saying it for years. You're effortless. That vibration, that standpoint of effortless creates your reality. It does. Your life is effort because you're choosing to be effort. You're saying you have to go to work. You're saying you have to do these things. It's your relationship. I'm not saying you're not going to go to work. Roxy's working right now, but this ain't working. This is her passion. It's a relationship with the action. That means the vibration only offers more and more and more of the same vibration of fun times, which expand to the next, to the next, to the next of the unknown. But you guys take the idea of the unknown and squash it down into an idea of a tiny little fractal idea, squash it really small and go, oh, this is life. It's not life. That's what you interpret as life. And darling, that's all vibration. So you got to change your approach to life. This is my idea. Choose as you will. Accept everything in your reality. Because there's, it's already there. You've already chosen it. Because there's no infringement of free will. Everything is choice. It's your reality. We don't have good and bad up here. We are one. So all this vibration that shows up is you. Vibrating at a frequency for an experience. So accept all reality and all of a sudden you're going to see something you've never seen before. I promise you. You're going to see how beautiful the universe is. Already. It's not going to become beautiful in the mind that you think it is. This is beautiful. If I had that, I'd be more beautiful. No, if I had that, that's going to make me better. You're going to be in the pursuit of happiness. You've been doing that your own the whole life. You're already that. That's the beauty you're going to start to discover when you accept reality as is. Leave it alone. If it pisses you off, then accept that it pisses you off. Say, God, that pisses me off. Get mad at it, get angry at it, and get that rage out of you and say, that vibration sucks. I really don't like that person. And you just really get angry about it. Good. Get it out. And then accept it and move on with your life. Because you're the one who makes things dealable. I got to deal with that. Oh, the, I, have to, I have to don this mask in front of my parents to make sure I'm a good little child. Oh, I can't offend these people at work. I have to be this idea masked employee in front of my boss. You're God. But you don't discover God until you start acting as the God that you are. And that's the free will choice of the heart screaming to you. And that's vibration. Vibration, vibration, vibration. When you become the tactician of vibration, your reality changes. Roxy's world has changed so much. We're still living in the idea of San Antonio, Texas in her apartment. But the whole universe is different. 
because she sees it with unfiltered eyes. And it's beautiful. There's no escaping. There's no tomorrow. There's just now. There's just the beauty of expressing in the moment. She gets to do this. But see, you can't convince yourself of that. You have to experience it. And the experience is the self-choice, the vibration that says, hey, this is your truth today. Let's do this. And one more thing before we end this question. When you get a truth, be that truth. But when you find yourself holding on to it in separation, in other words, your relationship with it is effort, then let it go and allow a new truth to come in. See, I'm going to explain one more thing about regret. I love water. So good, right? All right. I'm a person that makes an action, and that action is my truth. Bashar again, Echo and Bashar. Love that guy. All of your choices have been your best self, period. You gave yourself an ability to regret your best self because you measure that self's action in polarity, and that's God. So let's all take another point. Okay, let's all take another point of view, just for a moment. Let down your guards and see that that idea self that took an action gave birth to this self in the new now. And this self gets to reflect on that self as no longer choosing that truth. And it's realized itself in a new truth, an evolutionary birth. So thank you for all of the other selves who uh, made a choice to show me a better way inside. Vibration. Become the tacticians. Go ahead, Karen. Well, thank you. I just want to say something. I screamed out when you were doing one of your, what you were saying, because at one moment when you said about when you turn around in the chair and you see the world appearing as you turn around, when I was a little kid, I used to tell my mom that I had this idea that when I left the room, it stopped existing. But when I went I into it. the room, it existed. And she said, well, that sounds very selfish. <laughs> <laughs> She called it selfish. Oh my goodness, that's funny. <laughs> and I said, no, but that's what happens. I know that's what happens. That so was thank brilliant, you for because that's so, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for because uh, that's what my guides were telling me when I was a kid. Yeah. They told me it, and when I shared it, I was told, well, "You think just the world appears and disappears? It's your very and it, because you gaze upon it." And I said, "Yes." Yes. Yeah. So brilliant. I love it. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Eva has a question. Hey, Eva. Hi, and thank you for talking. I listened to you very carefully, and I want to um, clarify with you that I actually applied to what you said to myself, my okay. um, specific challenge. So okay. I'm going to say it, and you you tell me if I got it right. You got it, okay. baby. Okay. So when I perceive the animals in animal agriculture to be tortured, that means I am actually giving, I'm torturing them because I am perceiving them and giving no. my energy there. You're not torturing them. You're sustaining the vibration of torture and you're offering it to them. They still get to choose, but it's not okay. torture. You call it torture. That's what you believe is the truth. Yeah, if you yeah. were born on a planet that everything, all animals were slaughtered on a daily basis, much like you guys had no worries about eating the meal back in the 15, 16, 1700s, yet slaughter a goat, it became an idea of an event. No one looked at the animal as being tortured. The animal is being, let's say, praised for its idea of sacrifice by most cultures that it's honoring the people with its food. It wasn't being tortured. But, you know, we're, of course, we're talking about time and time shift. So nowadays, you look at the animals that uh, people are eating, cows and, and chickens and whatnot, as torture but see that's you saying that's torture and that's your that's your choice well, that no, I'm you actually, do, it's, it's minute, actually okay now it's not actually you use the word torture yes Listen i do me. that's an idea of a vibration 
that in that co-created reality of awareness, not the cows going or any animals going, oh, she's saying I'm torturing because they're not that idea sentient. They're awareness of vibration and you give them the vibration that that is painful. Then you're giving them a choice that's in their world to feel pain according to how they experience it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Of course, I'll have to listen to this again. I actually don't call um, death torture. I called what's happening in American agriculture torture because they are actually being tortured. But no, I am just no, they're asking. not. You are saying they are actually being tortured. You yeah. and only you. Anyone else is up to them. You may have a thousand people that join in saying, yeah, but you got another thousand saying no. See, that's the individual perspective. But if you're going to take your arrogant truth and slap it on society and say American agriculture is torturing, then you're becoming a separatist. So stay in your own little country, divide yourself, and be the idea of a separated God. You're judging reality. That's it. That's your choice. You get to do that. But you can't say it's torture to everybody else. You must be the idea that I'm saying it's torture because that's your godship return. But are okay. you experiencing oh, the torture? I'm trying to understand it. Have you ever been, uh, give me an animal, give me an animal that you're saying being tortured. Cow. Cow. A cow? So I, have, have you experienced being a cow tortured? Not that I remember. Okay, good. So let's start there because we're talking about you here and now. So mm -hmm. in that idea, you're only claiming they are being tortured, although you're not experiencing. So you're a theorist about what's happening through your idea of interpreted concept of between two idea two ideas of two objective ideas you being an objectified and the idea of that scene you're seeing as that mm -hmm. okay so that's what you get to do that's your approach that they're being tortured they're not they're experiencing you see them as torture their experience may look like torture but that's still all up to you. The entire universe, Jane and doctrines, the 12 and doctrines, Jane the speaker, the indoctrine of, of, of the idea that you are subjective. Everything is your choice, darling. Because I can find a million people that say they're not being tortured. And what are you going to call us? A bunch of idiots? Because we don't see your point of view? See, that's your arrogance being an idea of standing it's on its own pride and defending your point of view because you feel bad for the cows. But God damn it, the cows chose to be a cow. You think they're victims? Then that's the vibration. Back to the girl on YouTube. Perfect. See, your vibration is that idea agriculture is in demise. So you take this idea and put a moat around you. And anytime you approach your life with the vibration, of what it is with American agriculture, then automatically your vibration sustains the vibration of separation from your point of view, which also gives back to the collective the same idea to choose. But see, light workers don't choose ailments. They don't choose judgments. They don't choose what's wrong. They allow. That's what light does. A light doesn't get it in the way. You get in the way of your own light keeps you dark. That's your perception that keeps you bright and shaded. See, you're only shaded. You're not actually forgotten. You just have these perce perce perceptions in your idea. So what I'm saying to you is you can call that torture. Yes, but that sustains a vibration of separation because you're judging creation. I tell you, when you leave Earth, there's no judgments. There just is. You all understand that. But right now you have the beauty of being judging. I can see things wrong. I get to feel that. And that's what you spent your life. How about this? Try a different way by accepting it. And then it's not in your now. No cow is being slaughtered in your living room. How much time do you spend out there looking what's wrong with the world and judging the world? Where could you be? You be in the light representing passion. People start to talk with Roxanne about all the negative stuff. She goes, click, bye. She doesn't even play in that game. She goes, I'm going to go have fun. You guys can come along or not. 
the idea of the relationship with their parents, always trying to do the negative ideas. And then Roxy stopped engaging with them until they said, oh, we can't relate to Roxy with negative shit. Let's start talking and having fun. And now Roxy gets different versions of people because we were going to have fun. We're not here for a purpose to change the world. We're here to experience the possibilities of creation within an idea of a structure to be limited and then unlimited. So what I'm saying to you is I love what you do, but it's not your world. Your world is now passion what lies in front of you to give yourself a great time of fun. But as long as you're distracted with what's wrong, then you sustain that vibration and give it back to the creation as a possibility of choice. Remember, all you're doing is offering. That's what you do. You never influence or affect anything. There's no cause or effect. Cause is a bullshit idea that you take an action and someone goes, oh, you affected me. No, they chose to be affected by you. That's so all. people are vibrationally not affecting each other? No. They're all choice. You're never going to affect me, darling. Sorry. You're not that awesome. You're awesome in the way of unity, of unconditional. That's your awesomeness. Your awesome is not arrogance to affect someone. You choose to be affected. Albeit you, you didn't know that you didn't have the choice when you were a small child to say to the authority, hey, wait a minute, I don't want to do this. No, don't give me a vaccine. I don't want to go to school. And no, that's not your truth. Oh, your belief is this. That all people are white people are the superior race and black people need to be killed. See, we didn't know you had that choice. That's the idea of coveting. Coveting is you see and you accept. That's what happened in limitation to discover. Look, you're here for the, the grandest ride of the world. You're not here as a victim or sorrow or suffering. You're here to take an entire species through 17 billion years of collapsed timelines, all these billions of quadrillions of Earths to come together in this idea of this beautiful moment to say, hey, it's all good. Let's have some fun now and stop focusing. Abraham 101, energy follows awareness. Where I'm focusing becomes my world, reality. Let's just leave that stuff and, and, and then guess what? When no longer people attached to that or look at that or validate that in separation, then it goes away. You guys have fads on your earth. What happened to mullet haircuts? People were focusing on them and then all of a sudden, no, not anymore. It's the same thing. When you no longer focus, it's not in your reality. Right now, agriculture, ailments, uh, bad wrongdoing, judgings is in your reality because you're choosing to choose to see things that way. Maybe you didn't know. Of course you didn't know. We didn't know. That's the idea of separation. You don't know you're judging the reality as an idea of a truth from a standpoint and looking at it objectively. You didn't know. That's the gift of waking up. But now you know. I say leave it alone. Because look how many protests. Look how many things everyone has done for billions of years. You guys think you're, you're arrogant to think you're, you, you, that this earth is the one earth. There's so many other earths that are going through the idea of the same thing, that, that have protests and change and, and good versus evil and all that stuff. But it always ideas. When you tell person they're wrong, they're going to defend. How about this? Go do your thing. Okay, someone in the class just said, well, what about the idea of you're going to let people kill? Okay, let, let, let's all do an experiment here. Everyone right now to themselves, if everyone was free and there were no laws, would anyone in the class to their self, rhetorical question, and out there on YouTube land, answer this question to yourself. Would you go out and kill? You were taught to kill through lack, through classes, through separation, through racism, through divisionaries. You were taught to be lackful, to get and take from another. So no one acts as that naturally. Because if everything is here for you, the only thing you're going to do is play because we're natural explorers and we're always fun. See, so see, that's the idea. You're thinking for other people what people are going to do. So you have to maintain the idea of the separation and try to change them through force. Well, force is force and you're only going to get force. It's like a pissing contest. Everyone just gets wet. That's it. That's all you do. You sustain the vibration with the same mannerisms of that's wrong. And then you get that's wrong. And you're surprised that your reality doesn't think. And then you sit there when they don't see your point of view and you judge them. Oh, yeah, they're stupid. They don't see this way. This way is the best way. No, it's not. That's an arrogant way. The best way is to allow, 
to become light and start to represent light by having fun, by showing the world is effortless, that God shows up in your life every single day, and that God is the whole of you, okay, saying here, and your life becomes an easement. It becomes so beautifully, magically, and all of a sudden, all those things that you're distracting yourself with no longer are in your reality. They're not there because you're not vibrating in the same constitution of that reality. You can't see it because it's not your vibration. You can walk right through the middle of a murder down in the idea of the downtown of, let's say, New York, and no one's going to see you because you're on a different plane, vibrational field. But you can't experience that as long as you sustain vibration through the actions of the known. You keep repeating the known, the, the known sustains. You've got to allow and get the unknown. And that's this God, as Osiphia said at the beginning. I'm God, right here. This is it. This is how God represents itself in this idea of moment. This is the God that I want to know and be concerned with. I'm not concerned with the other gods. I'm going to adventure and give this God the ride of a lifetime. In other words, Roxanne's telling Roxanne, Roxanne, I'm going to give you what you deserve. So let's go and have some fun. So she starts to express and be herself. And my God, that's so much light. And people love her. They fucking love her. Everywhere she goes, they love her. They don't understand why they love her. It's because she's not bitching. She's not screaming. She's not telling them things are wrong. She's expressing herself. Some people are like, whoa, that's a little weird. But that's okay because they get to see the unknown, for God's sakes. You get to show them there's something else to this world, the beauty of diversity and not the commonality of the same utilitarian system that you guys have grown accustomed to. You guys are brilliant gods. But you can't be a god if you keep containing yourself to the wrongs of the world, the distractions. You got to be open. Now, listen, this last part, listen close. It hurts. It's going to hurt you. Now, that's an idea of an arrogant point of view, but through the experience of me waking up humanity in the ways I've done for the centuries and centuries I've done it, it does hurt to release that self, pride, arrogance, responsibility judgment it hurts because there's a physical leaving remember bashar you're holding on to that negative energy all you gotta do is let go see when you're holding on you're holding on in struggle now what happens is when you accept yourself accept yourself as an arrogant asshole divided against creation roxy had to accept herself of rage she was just pissed off at people fucking her over in her life and she was just really pissed about that and she accepted that rage and it hurt because she wanted to get back she wanted to make things right but you can't because that sustains it you got to be this master you got to be this master of allowance and you got to be this meek idea and that meek idea says go ahead and then all of a sudden you see the release because you're not feeding them now back to abraham 101 you're not feeding them what they are you're not sustaining. You're taking their legs out. Yeah, you're right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Go play. Go. Uh-huh. Do what you want. And you're not giving them reasons to feed off of you. You're not becoming a dependency or a drug dealer of their emotional lack. You just leave them alone. And you start to focus on something different. Your light. And your light says, I am. And you start to express. And then people want to play with you because they've had enough of the shit of I have to. That's why this happening is right now. That's why this world is waking up. You guys are so tired of being told what to do. That's why everything is changing. That's why you have companies like Google out there and why you have these ideas of oh, that one CEO. He took his $750,000 raise and gave it to his employees, for God's sake, because he has enough. We have enough. We're going to give each other what we are in expression. But as long as you distract yourself with what's wrong, that's a vibration that sustains your world. Your world changes when you change your point of view, period. No one will ever do that for you because you're God. You're God choosing your reality through your subjective point of view. The eyes that you are will never go away. You're only going to remember more of yourself. You're only going to grow into this expansion of you, this ideology. But as long as you're distracting yourself with that, then you sustain vibration, and vibration is law. Reality, vibration, change it. They're interchangeable. Law and reality. You idea law yourself and validating what is known, 
that's the reality that you're going to sustain and the probabilities of those potential worlds will be within that frequency range. You start to change, you get the same world, but it's a whole new world. Roxy and Tom know very well when they actually shift Earth. They can see themselves shifting Earth. Traffic is different. The lights different. Peoples are different. The clothes are different. Prices are different. All these things start to change because you're changing your co-created value of creation. Your idea of your awareness becoming more worthy. And it's all done through the beauty of your individual self-expression choice of what is I am. And the reason why your life is, is because you are choosing that I am. That's all I got on that. And that's really good. I know, right? <laughs> Hi, Karen. Okay. Hi. Okay. Um, Infinite is in the in the YouTube chat and has a question, and it's just a it's a question of per, um, only someone with infinite perspective can really tap into. So, so he, he can reality. tap into it. <laughs> yes, I guess he's being lazy today. Uh, he might be a little, a little lazy today. <laughs> <laughs> What's the reality like where Atlantis didn't sink into the? Um, oh yeah, that's and where a the great dinosaurs uh, and the dinosaurs still exist alongside humans and aliens. Mm, the and dinosaurs have actually picture painted. Right, right, right. I gotcha. The dinosaurs themselves were, uh, let's say, there was a few of the dinosaurs that were sentient. In other words, alien to your worlds. The raptors would be one of them. So there's no raptors living alongside because they came for a particular experience to co-create with the idea of dinosaurs. They didn't want to play with humans, so they're gone. But anyways, you do have, uh, I'll go with the idea of the dinosaur Earth first. That Earth is, uh, let's say, not polarized. How about that? It's, it's polarizing the idea of separation and fear, but you've learned to live with each other. I, I think you guys are understanding it like when cats and birds are cuddling together, let's just watch your YouTube, when dogs and raccoons are hanging out, you know, playing cards, shooting the shit, things are changing. See, that's all Earth already took place that that timeline played out. So uh, the, the idea of extinction uh, was not what the theorists say. It was choice. Uh, they, because it didn't fit in the idea of the polarized world with co-creation at the earth that you currently validate in your history. So that earth is, let's say, humans being city-states and uh, the idea of, let's say, dinosaurs being agricultural uh, distances. Because uh, brontosaurus, I guess you guys call them. What do you call them now, Tommy? Brontosaurus? You guys change the name like three times. Allosaurus? A pedosaurus? Yeah, uh, that idea. You guys keep changing your names. Um, those ideas are, are, are uh, structured of, of, of co-creators. They, they roam among the cities, and they know where to go and stuff. But your man-eaters, uh -uh, they're agriculture, so you have divisionary ideas to keep them from eating humans because they're dinosaurs, uh, but they're still with your Earth. Not really an exciting Earth, I wouldn't say. Um, it's not technologically advanced at all. It keeps itself in the idea of, let's say, probably the most comparable distance is about the 16 to 1700s of technology. Uh, no electricity. Um, but uh, out after the Middle Ages of, let's say, no plague, no disease, uh, there's no really classes. That's really cool part about it is you don't have serfs and peasants and uh, royalty and things like that. So that's a really cool Earth. That's where the dinosaurs exist. Now, the Atlantean idea of Earth, really cool Earth, and you guys will discover that Earth um, in your probability of remembrance is because many of you are Atlanteans, okay? And, you know, that's easy. And also, let's say, um, uh, humans that are co-creating with Atlanteans, whether you're... Um, what you would call the idea of Mesopotamia, that, that culture, or the Anani culture, which is what you call your Native Americans, um, or your Mayans, that kind of ideas, um, that are still co-creating with that earth. Now, their technology is equal to ours, but it didn't go much past the idea of getting into the wires, you know, the wires of things, computers. I need, give me a wire. Yeah, anyways, computer, ah, here we go, ah, there we go, thank you, Richie, <laughs> anyways, cell phones, right, the idea of cell phones, uh, that kind of technology, 
it, it took itself in a technological fashion where uh, the world becomes um, energetically robotic. So let's understand this. You walk into a room and you want the lights to turn on. Okay? Then lights will turn on because you thought it. So that's how the co-creation of that earth works. But it's not done through electricity. It's done through liquid light. And liquid light is bought, bought by this idea of the, crystal, the crystalline collective. Okay? And they have this technology that's accessible to your idea of earth. And what it is, is light contained in a certain idea. And when I mean contained, it, it's light is... Just like water, it can be in any direction. It can take form. And the idea is the liquid like in the processes of uh, just like you uh, fashion or fabricate steel into an idea of a certain or plastic into an idea of a certain mold, you could do with that liquid light. So the entire world is luminous. And the lumini within the idea of the luminous are co-created little creatures that change the colors and do the things of that world. So that's the uh, idea of the world. Now, within that liquid light also are constitutions of robotics. And what I mean by robotics is I don't mean robots, okay? You guys are misinterpreting AI, but it's it, but it's go going in the right direction, which is good. Or not really the right direction, but a direction that's more beneficial to you. Okay. So... Um, so let's let, let's look at the liquid light that becomes a robot, um, uh, robotics, if you will. So let's say you want to teleport. So you would get into a teleporter made of light, and you would teleport to wherever you wanted to go in destination, and it's all done through thought, all of it. So the Atlanteans mastered their ideas of uh, self-awareness. So at the Christ conscience of that time, that did not probably play out the the. Christ conscience of that time uh, that played out this Atlantean time of its uh, demise. So uh, there you go. I think that works. Good, Karen? Yes, I, I think that's very, very good. Does anyone else have any questions within the room? Anyone? Anyone? Yes, David has a question. Go ahead, David. Oh, wait, let me change the picture. Hello, how are you? Hey, David, how are you? Oh, pretty good. You look good. good. It's, it's been uh, changing quite a bit. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Some of it's fun. Some of it's been really, really rough. Yeah, but see, you got to upset yourself. Because if you're set, you're the same old song and dance, and that's not an explorer. <laughs> well, the last time you mentioned about not attaching to, and I've been going through an experience of trying to help somebody heal, and um, mm -hmm. it's been a little painful. But I found out that she didn't really, she was kind of playing games, and she needs to do it herself. She wasn't really ready. Um, well, I think the idea was a, more of a dependency. See, people, more than anything, need admiration on this earth. Okay? And what I mean by, what I mean by that is you gotta you gotta felt feel that you're alive. Do you have any pickles, Roxy, that are cut? I just love pickles. Okay, so stick with me on this one, okay? Sure. So this idea of dependency. Um she plays a, a certain sympathetic card that she knows she's gonna get attachments to of the sympathetic ideas. Uh it's, it's called a pity card. You play in poker, you play a pity card, right? And that pity draws sympathy. So that then that lack of I count is fulfilled. And the reason why people do this, listen very closely, everyone, is because they don't know how to love themselves. Because this earth didn't teach anyone that they are allowed to love themselves. They had to create an image that was successfully or failed in the ideas of the authority that you currently validated. And the first one, of course, is mom and dad. Whether mom and dad was uh, grandparents or foster parents or no parents, whoever you coveted at that certain idea, gave you an idea of measurement on how you're supposed to perform in life, and then the God, God, didn't it suck? Didn't it suck, guys, when you're, you disappointed your parents and they let you know it? So you got that in you that you're failed, so you want to make yourself feel better, right? So what you do is you go in through a life, it becomes a habit. And all of a sudden, you start to become depleted. I know the camera's not in focus. You start to become depleted and the idea of your self-worth. So she went out and 
found this idea element to get fulfilled in some ideas. So that's why you called the bullshit on her and said, let her do it herself, right? Well, I had a channeling and I had help with that decision. Well, look, kid, it doesn't matter how it come. You're allowed to take credit for your awesomeness, all right? All right. It doesn't matter the channeling. It was your world, your God here. It doesn't matter the resources, you know? Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Go ahead. What else? I know. I don't know. I just uh, I didn't really have a lot of questions. I just wanted to say hi, and uh, that was helpful, so that was good. Yeah. Look at it that way. A little better understanding of what's been currently going on. And that's been uh, quite quite painful to uh, um, deal with. Well, accept, accept the pain. And you don't have to deal with it. See, that's your choice to deal with it. There is another reality. Like Karen said, when you turn your focus away from this, that ain't there. You know what's there? What's in front of you? You're the one who keeps choosing. It's like one of the ideas in my class, in Sylvester's class that Roxy teaches, okay? <clears throat> one of the students keeps going back to this girl, right? And he knows it's going to be a, a hornet's nest every time he does it. But he needs that because she gives him some kind of idea of fulfillment that he doesn't know how to love himself. Okay? So this is idea of your pain is a choice because you feel like you have a purpose and you matter, and then you deal with it in your own way to sacrifice your happiness for pain. But I can tell you the big picture here. It is your happiness because there's nothing you've ever chosen that's not your joy. It is your passion. That's why it's there. And why is it there? Because you're God. So you change your point of view today to let them play in their pain. You don't have to be in pain. You're not here. There's no kudos. There's no, no one keeping score on how much you suffered in order to get something because there's no grand prize because it's just an idea of a now. That kicks a lot of people in the ass because you want purpose. You want hope. You want an outcome. But what you're missing is the beauty of life now that you've always been. So let go of that idea of dealing and don't pay any homage to it because it's not your now. It's not your reality. But it is when you choose it. And then you get exactly what you said. I'm dealing with it and I have to suffer the pain. Well, that's your choice. And I'm telling it, it is. Because not one person can ever do shit to you unless you accept it. Make sense? Yes. I'm going to listen again so it makes more sense. <laughs> Booyah. Any um, guidance on uh, the healing work I do in relation to letting go of, of wanting them to heal, wanting it so bad? If yes. That was a good pickle. <laughs> Excellent. The, pro the produce on this planet alone, I'm telling you. All right. Here we go. So... An energetic healer holds space in your terms, okay? There's a certain light. You guys have honed it into your chakras ideas, okay? You don't have to validate chakras. It's only validated if you want to, okay? So, it's your God. So, this idea, purple, the crown, okay? And this is purple ray. That has what you call an element within it. That purple ray vibration, that energy, okay, has an element that offers the body in and of itself at a degree of what you would call stem cell, your genomes, your original, okay, your blueprint when you arrived to be stimulated and heal whatever part of the body that is no longer in what they call original state. In other words, it's been distorted by the frequencies of, let's say, the person, okay? So someone gives themselves cancer because they're in pain all their life because they're just pissed off. So they've been taking an idea of a vibration and stuffing it inside of them in cancer birth. Okay? And it's not genetic. That's the biggest all right. That's that's choice. Okay. So they can call it genetic because they're gods and they can claim it and that becomes a reality. So yes, it's genetic if they choose it to be, but it's not. It's neutral. Everyone's neutral. All right. So this ailment that you want to heal, you're going to offer this light. So your approach is, I'm not the healer. 
everyone views me as a healer because that's what works on earth. Perfect. But your relationship with healing is what you said, how to stop being that I really want to heal. Well, that's your own self-love. And it becomes a knowingness that you are a potential for the patients to heal themselves. So you do your idea, Reiki. What, what, what modality are you using? Uh, signature cell, uh, Reiki, intuitive, okay. gotcha. love. So whatever's in that idea, you become the vibration of that in allowance. And you start to tune in with the best ways. You keep the shadow mind out of the picture by saying, yep, uh-huh, yeah, I'm not sure it's right either. Yep, yep. And whatever thoughts come in your head, just let them wisp away as Seth. That's back to Seth 101. Let them go because all thoughts at the end come back to love, every single one. All right. <clears throat> so you just let that go and you start to become the connection between this person and you and allow the idea of that purple ray energy to come in and give that person a choice to accept the healing. That's it. If they don't accept it, you're not going to do dick. I don't care yes. how awesome you are. I understand. Picking up what I'm laying down? Yes. You got this shit. Good job, kid. Very Go have fun, man. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome, Dom. Oh, well, if there's other questions. Go I ahead. Just... Um, something happened that uh, I was taken. Something was put into the head and it's been affecting the thoughts so now i've been recovering to balance the thought processes don't balance it anymore let go of the effort of balance and let it do it in itself because how long have you been doing it you're still okay you claim your efforts of balancing are keeping you alive they're not you are keeping you alive because you want to all right so, and I don't mean actually physical death, but in the uh, alive of, let's say, uh, the way you're distracting yourself. Let's put it that way. So, um, let it go, accept it, and now your thoughts will not need to be balanced because they will be reality is. Because balance is effort to keep it over here. And if it looks like it's over here, who's judging it looks like it's imbalanced? You. So, you give yourself the experience of balancing. So, your time, your nows, your focus is on keeping yourself in balance when you're already in alignment with the entire universe. You can never be no other way because you are one. So now you can let go of that and watch how it's going to work out and see the magic unfold. You don't have to contain yourself in the known. You can allow the unknown to come in. And the unknown is not scary. It's impossible because scared is known. Fear is known. Fear is placing the mask upon the unknown and saying it's fearful. No, it's not. It's unknown. Interpreted every moment by you, the God that you are. So okay. let it go. Cool? Cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. How are we doing, Karen? Yeah, very good. Um, there's a question about the Mandela effect. And Isn't it the, great? Yes. And the question about fun with why it. is the map changing? Countries are getting bigger and smaller. There used to be 217 countries. Now there's 195. Right. Where are they going? What's happening? What's the meaning? What's going on? Help. It's not necessarily <laughs> where it's going, where it's happening. Yeah. Because you, from, from that point of view, that's the world that you have moved to. You're remembering. Look, you don't want the reasons why you're getting 217 free countries and then 195. Okay? You're not doing that. That's not the purpose. What the idea is to show you that you're changing timelines. Go with the flow to experience the unknown. Bernstein bears, Bernstein bears. I love it. Those are two yeah. different herbs. There's some yeah. to validate here, but I'm validate here. You know, you know this. I know that you you did a lot of research on the Mandela effect. You have a whole bunch of ideas about mm -hmm. that, and that's the that's the ideas of the memories being created in the mound and now, according to the vibrational world that you're co-creating in in that moment. And when it shifts, it shifts. Go for the ride. Don't get out and start to stop the roller coaster where you're going. Just enjoy the ride. Trust it. Your whole self's driving. Let go. Go ahead. Okay. Um, then there's another question. One second, because I have to scroll up a little bit. Um, there's a question about from Starheart that says, can you tell me about a being called Lilith who is oh. helping me with sexuality? Lilith is the idea of what you're referencing. That Lilith that's helping you with the sexual, sexuality is a beautiful representation of femininity, femin, femininity that was expressed 
That's who. Who know? Karen, do you know who Lilith is? Lilith, well, from what I understand, Lilith was the first creation, yes! the first female creation. First wife. The first wife of Adam. And Thank you. she was badass. And she, oh, she just, was she was nothing but I'm beautiful, right? Exactly. And when when Adam tried to, you know, be all dominant and everything, she told him to take a leap. Be all manly. And she well, said he, he, she <laughs> said pound sand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. They they wanted her to they she wanted to be on top. In oh sex. yeah. And, and and she was told she wasn't allowed to do that. And so she got really right. mad. <laughs> she likes riding horses. She was saying, hey, look at this. <laughs> and then she, she left. And then, well, basically, she turned into a she, – she found her inner magical child and flew away. But yeah. then, then Eve was um, – Yeah, was and the, the, rest, the rest is all that. So Lilith is the idea, star out there for you, is the idea of representing – what you're worth in femininity, okay? You don't need to be boisterous or, or obtuse about it, okay? But you can be expression about it. And your sexuality was diminished at some point of your life because let's say, let's look at the, the world. Women are punished for being women for a very long time in that idea point of view. Women are kept down, that blah, blah, blah. But anyways, you guys are changing that. You're doing an awesome job. Keep rocking in it and keep allowing yourself. So... You're working on what you call a particular set of belief systems that you coveted in your lifetime about your uh, sexuality, that you can scream at the top of your lungs and do things that most people would be like, holy cow, that's, that's nasty or that's bad, or you know, it's tilting in the idea of fetish um, is w what you're trying to bring out in you. It's not you're that, but you want to experience that because you have that expression within you to play it. There's nothing in this playground that is untouchable. Always know that. Whatever your mind thinks is a possibility that you have created in a reality of potential to have an experience of. So, but what's blocking you is your particular view of your self-love, your self-worth that says your sexual idea prowess is, is not in constitution with the alignment of current humanity standards. Well, I say fuck humanity and go on with your badass self and discover your femininity, your sexuality, your isness, and then represent to humanity the potential that they want to. Roxy represents something different. There he is. What? Authentic. So don't be afraid, darling. And Lilith is that vibration. She's awesome. Get to know her. She'll talk to you about more things, too, if you want. She'll talk to you about universal. She'll talk to you about um, light magic and, and some, some stuff like that. Stuff. Really good. Really good. Oh, we got that. Okay. We got you. Okay, perfect. Okay, Julie has a question. She says, greetings, Sylvester. And greetings, Julie. And there's another, there's a lot, another good question for differentiation. Explain the specific definition between mass consciousness and individual consciousness, and the statement that there is only one soul. Okay, well, I, I'm gonna let me do the soul thing first. There's not one <laughs> soul. You're not attached to the soul. Soul is a soul memory complex. That's your experience and reflection that you've ever, you're in, in all of your now, nows of sequential taneous. That's your reflection of what you have, if you want to do in time, done. So that's where you contain your isness of all your experiences. Um, but the, let's say, let's, let's do the idea of mass consciousness and individual, right? Is that right, Karen? Yes, that's exactly okay. right. Perfect. So mass consciousness is the current validation of humanity's acceptable. Uh, let's say uh, nowadays, if we were to hang someone in the town square, most of humanity would not appreciate that. So that's the mass idea, vibration approach to that action within the psyche of humanity. The individual is like, I'd love to see that. They deserve it. So they get their own point of view of that. See, that idea. So there's a collective mass consciousness that what is and is not acceptable. Uh, let's say, and, and down in the idea of the Southern Americas, they don't sacrifice their seventh child anymore. Uh, because when they had a seventh child, they sacrificed to keep the plague away. 
<laughs> the black magic. Okay, that's not acceptable as a mass psyche. The mass psyche is always what's changing through representation. We no longer drill holes in people's heads to let the demons out. A lot of you people aren't convinced that there's an angry God out there trying to fuck you over. See, that's the idea of the mass consciousness shifting. What shifts it is the individual expression vibrationally. It doesn't have to be expressed in light, but that's how most people get it up here on top side. But of course, vibrationally, you're always giving the idea of your own light. Whether your idea of there's a current mass is, is a recession of the mass or a movement of the mass collective. That's how you guys are ascending because you got light workers out there representing. And light workers are not the idea of ascension light workers. They're saying, look what I found to play with. Uh, computers. Your your um, uh, Steve uh, and uh, Bill. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Steve goes, it's Bill. <laughs> So, uh, you know, they were light workers. They're bringing the unknown into the known. So that's what you do in whatever fashion you can do it. But you, you got to find your own dance in that. That's your individual expression that changes the human psyche mass idea. Okay, that's why the aliens haven't shown up because you guys are not ready to have aliens land and say, hey, uh, can I get a burger? You know? They, they want to come and hang out with us, but we haven't seen them because we have this idea. Mass psyche is the idea of the aliens are, oh, no, we need guns. We got a defense. We got to poke and prod them to make sure it's not ready because you're not ready yet. So as the representation and uh, the light workers out there, which you know, the people, the conspiracy theorists that are whistleblowing and releasing and the ones on the deathbeds are taking these secrets to the grave, they're not taking them to the grave anymore. They're releasing them and saying, hey, man, there's aliens out there. There's this out there. This is happening. We've had this out for a while. And all this stuff is becoming psyche, mass psyche awareness. And then the conscious self of the individual gets to choose what to do with that idea of awareness and keep going and going. So that's why. Uh, probability 2025 to 2033, and here comes the idea of the first alien species to do a mass landing and go, hey, we're here. But you guys will be well versed in knowing already because everything is going to be released by then. You're going to have all the ideas of the interactions of the aliens you've been with and the Zetas and the hybridization programs and all that stuff with the Arcturians and everything. So yay, okay, you get to do that. But that's the idea. See, light workers change. They offer the unknown, a new way to go to work instead of 40 hours, 33 work. I think it's the country of Denmark. Be like Denmark, you know. Um, everything is paid for, the, the medical, and, 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 and you get to go to work 33 hours, and you get two weeks of vacation a year or something else. I don't know. It's just a really fucking cool place to live. So be like Denmark, right? You know, that kind of idea. You represent your light. You represent what's your passion. Don't be that object because it looks cool. Find your own light and express it because that's the brightness that's vibrationally shifting the idea of the entire collective, the massed vibration. Booyah. Like we're doing today. <laughs> Check it out. Exactly. Check it out. Okay, Check let me out. just make sure if I have any other uh, question. Then she says she came back. Okay. And she said to specify the question in terms of the principle of quote unquote reflection, it seems um say while talking to others, they are me or are they just part of me? Well, let's say you are always you. But they're not you in the idea of an individual. They are you in the idea of conscious one. So to understand the whole, there's one God that is expressing through all, it's all itself. But there's not a God up here going, hey, I'm God. Because we're all God. We're all the whole idea of this mass consciousness of one expressing the individual set of eyes, our persona, our I am. So I am Sylvester and I'm Roxy. Hey, guys. And then now this is Roxy and Sylvester mixed in together to express. See, it's not an idea of one or the other. As you say, it's the unum of one through the individual expressions of all. So in other words, I get to because Roxy chose to channel. So I get to be this idea of Sloxy. <laughs> that kind of thing. So you're always blending yourself, but you're also your own point of view. Of the one. 
And that that as we go on, as you go on in your journey, okay, what that is going to do is become more harmonistic with you because right now the, the 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 fractal mind, the separated mind, thinks in terms of finites and logics and containers. Logically, this is this and this is this, so these are two different things. So I have to separate them with containers. It can't have all of this one birthing itself out. But I know that, you know, if any of you are Roxy's age in the 70s and 80s and stuff, you had that little light thing with the little fibers and the light would beam and all the ends of the fibers would light up and change colors. And it was like this big hairdo thing that would just, you know, glow. And the source, if you will, is that. But you're the source expressing the light. It's all one. Oh, man, that was really good. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Karen. Just let me just one second because I'm trying to check to see if there's any other questions here. Okay, Omar in the chat. I'm going to ask oh. you very quickly. Stop typing so much because I can't find everything that's being said. Okay, all right. She says she goes. Uh, Starheart says, um, although everything is possible, is it likely that portal technology and teleportation will be brought into the mass consciousness? within this lifetime? Absolutely. Depends on how old you are, though. If you're 95, maybe not. <laughs> but yeah, That's teleportation. Yeah. Teleportation is a, is a huge probability. See, once the idea of the collective comes and we know we have that technology, do you think the government's actually going to be able to control that idea? No, not a chance. The government, by that time of uh, first contact, is going to be more administrative ideas. They're going to lose their power more and more because you guys representation of what you don't want out there right now. And then people are saying, wow, we don't want to play with that anymore. Let's go play with the shiny thing. So the mass psyche shifts its awareness and the government ceases its idea of so much structure power and release it and become more administrative. And then of course, uh, let's say the technologies will be out there and you'll have, it's not so much portals at the beginning. You'll have uh, replacements of transportation device. First, cars are going to stick around for a while because you like cars. It, it's built into the mm, sigmatism, but they're going to be, of course, powered with electricity, like the Tesla idea is a birthing thing of a whole new form of electricity contained uh, for a long, sustained time. Um, and then you have um, uh, remote cars that don't, you know, you, you can just hop in and tell it where to go and it goes by itself and then of course you will get your teleporters now there's going to be a structural phase a changing because you can't deplete the idea of a billion people relying on fossil fuels you're not going to be able to feed them so there has to be the mass psyche of leaving this idea and introducing this idea and then teleporters so you can go from here to france and have breakfast and then go have dinner in morocco so you can do that and that'll happen as time moves forward very cool. Very exciting. Okay. Um, okay. Of, of, oh, Avinash is a person that says, hi. What is the hi. highest, according to you, and can you talk about self and harnessing power of self and to surrender to self and self talk about self? <laughs> a lot of self going on here, and I love it. <laughs> Should I Be read that selfish. again? Be Should selfish in your universe. Yeah, uh, I'm not okay. quite getting this. This. Okay. Uh, what? Oh, what's the highest self? What is the highest? Yeah. What is the highest according to you? And can you okay. talk about self and harnessing power of self and surrendering to self and self stuff talk about self? Wow. 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 <laughs> a lot of self is going on here. There's so the lot. highest self is you. There's no one higher than you. Always know that because it's, you are God. We're all the same idea. There's no higher or lower. Truly, that's a measurement you get to play with in polarity because you have that point of view as a possibility. So you constitute it, becomes your reality. Ta-da, because you're God. Okay, so this whole of you is your individual whole, and that's the highest self. Now, the one thing that I like is the surrender part. It's not that you're going to give up. It's going to give in. Give in to your heart. Give up on your mind. You can do it that, but that way. Oh, pickles make me burp. I'm sorry. Uh, give up on your mind and give into your heart. That kind of idea. Be this. Be this something that you've never experienced. Why? Why? Why contain an image? Why be an image that is not self? Self expressed. See here. Let me let me give you all a clue. And Roxy channeled this in her in her YouTube channel a little while ago. Sifius did. Maybe it was your focus. When you when you look at yourself. 
you contain yourself within an image of judgment. That's what you were taught. Okay, and then as you move along, you add to your or take away from your image. Okay, now here's the bad news, guys, and it's not bad news, it's revelation. No matter what image you portray in the best time spending that imagery, they're still going to fucking judge you any way they want. That's the beauty of free will. You got to see that. So, how about trying this? Okay, be an image to them. But not to yourself, because they're gonna they're gonna see you any way they want. They already have an image of you, so might as well be the image you've never met. That's the authentic. That's the one that expresses and makes itself feel good. So you surrender to the idea of the self. Start to express yourself as you choose. The outfits you wear, the makeup you wear, the clothes you eat, the clothes you wear, the clothes, the food you eat, where you go, who you hang with. Start to play, for God's sakes, and stop pushing everything away to keep yourself safe. Because there's nothing unsafe. There's just God. Okay, so your vibration attracts those things in your reality that equals the potential of expansion. So be the idea of allowance. Let go and surrender, and expansion comes effortlessly because you're the eternal explorer of the now. So that's what's going to happen, and you express your truth through this idea, evolution of you, that self to remember the self of the whole. That was exquisite. What else? How to make light from sound. How to make light from sound. Uh, no, it's... Yeah. it's uh, it's reversed. Light turns into sound because light is a vibration, even though it's not seen in some ideas, especially in the ideas of uh, the, 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 there it is. Thank you, Roxy. The spectrums that your light, your eyes can see. You guys can't like see ultraviolet, but you can see it if you open up your, uh, the more practice you do with your third eye, you can see ultraviolet in your idea of your uh, mind. Um, so light is first, and then through that, you tone light with a receptor. So music is light. But with the receptor or the sense and the interpreter of sound, your ear turns light into tone, which gives you sound. And it's also, sound is, okay, no, here's another thing. Sound is compression. Sound only exists when there's something to reflect. Okay, so you need a compression world in order to contain light into an idea of a frequency that's sound. So you can have hearing, okay? So that's your earth. Your earth is compressed. That's why you have sound. There's no sound in space because there's no idea compression there. That's why everything... <laughs> that was funny. God. Oh, my God. I'm so funny. So, okay. So in that idea, uh, that's how you have sound because you are in a compression universe or a compression world right now that contains that in the atmosphere. So you get that vibrational feedback of tone and it's also physical you can feel sound you can feel sound out of the speakers that's what the Hathors were masters at that's why you can levitate the heaviest rocks that the rocks in the world that's how the the pyramids idea were built that's the same thing as the crystal uh, crystal palace the crystal castle thing down in florida that guy that you know everyone is like oh they's just got a box or a tripod well no it was a levitation device it took anything within that frequency and it frequency but no one can hear it because it's such a high frequency some dogs could hear it, depending on the uh, breed uh, and take it and you just move it into the area and that area starts to vibrate and takes it and becomes Effortless, because it's contained in the field of vibration called sound, which means it's light as a feather, and you can push it across, and that's how he built the castles, and that's how you guys transported all those rocks across the deserts, and same with the idea of the Bosnian pyramids and your, your and, and Antarctica pyramids that are going to be discovered. It was the same technology. It was tonal. That was given by the Hathors. The only representation of Hathors on the earth right now is the idea of your Egyptians, but you have representations in the Hathors that will be validated when uh, you guys keep digging around in Bosnia, and of course, as the ice caps... Uh, polarized ice cap melt, you can get more and more into the idea of Antarctica and discover the fun stuff there. Remember, guys, it's not a conspiracy. It's not. It's, wow, look what we get to play with now. So cool. That's it. 
There's a question also if you know about what is the frequency of the 3D Earth light. You you hit it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you hit it. Okay. Uh, thank you. And then no. um, also, uh, Starheart says when I encounter something which elicits fear in me, it feels like a shock wave in me. It happens super fast. I want to be okay and accepting of the sphere, but it's so fast. How do I let it go and love fear? Okay, I don't, I don't want you to love fear because that's a constitution of an effort. I just want you to accept fear and then realize in the moment that no fear is here. Realize in the moment that no fear is here. You are not in danger right now when the fear is here. You're still not in danger. You're still here. You're still now. And that idea, validation of the self being perfect despite what the fears say and all that you're gonna say wow fear's bullshit and the validation of fear will let's say deplete as your focus in the now becomes more and more passion so when it comes say awesome i'm accepting of fear i don't need to change it i don't need to love it i'm just this idea of fear holy shit i'm scared but everything is cool I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And just go about your nows and go and have fun. Whatever that is in the of now that's available, go and change it. If it gets too much, too daunting, take a fucking nap. If it just gets it, just go and do it. If you need to distract yourself, go that. Yes, David, be love, not act as love. Be love, your natural state. So that idea, relationship with that star, is to become the idea of accepting, 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 and don't do anything about it because you guys have been doing stuff about it and it's still not there. Why? Because you're doing something about it. And that means it's focused. So that means it's there as that because you're the interpreter of fear. As that. And it changes. Because nothing is fear until you change it into fear. It can be a rose. You can change it into a dandelion. You guys are gods. Go ahead, Karen. Uh, I don't have any other questions in the chat at the moment. I'm, I'm okay. looking, but the, it seems gone yeah. all quiet. You've answered we're every almost, question known to man. We're almost up to, what, mm -hmm. uh, two hours you anyway, got, so it's pretty good. Yeah, you're almost there. You've got about 14 minutes. So if anyone has any other questions, they need to type them quickly. If anyone in the chat who hasn't spoken would like to ask a question, please let me know. But there's also this. You yes. guys can trust yourselves. you got to get used to being the God that you are. Okay, you don't have to earn your way back to God. There's no stripes. There's no test. It's your natural state of being. You just shaded yourself with coveting beliefs. Didn't know. That's all. So when you start to trust and act upon yourself as God, choosing your godly ways, despite the results, because there aren't results. They're just reality is. <clears throat> so if you accept reality is and someone doesn't like it, have a Coke and a smile. I'm going about my nails. You may lose some people in your life, <clears throat> but you've done the highest act of love. Because you offer them light, and that's your light, being the idea of my choice, okay? Being the idea of my choice, of myself. And that will become your idea of fun in the now. That becomes your reality. you got to trust this self to get to know this self. For God's sakes, you don't know you. Spend time inside. Osiphius nailed it at the beginning. God, become the internal. Kingdom of heaven lies within. Start to understand the I am by trusting, talking to yourself, making some choices, you know, and, and live life, you know. Don't, don't hold yourself to accountabilities of imagery. What is it to be spiritual? Well, let's say before it was this, and now it's this, and now it's this, and now it's this. How, who's right? Whoever screams the loudest and whoever doesn't have any value of its own choice. And then it's validated in numbers until the next idea comes along. But this idea is about choosing the self of representation, where all lights can be harmonious because they're all individually expressing. No one needs to express each other's truth. We are now our own truth. Oh, how beautiful is that? God, this is so good. Oh. And okay, in, infinite possibilities has a question. No suggestions for your life, baby. You're doing okay. what it is. You're doing your passion. But when your passion becomes an effort, that's when it's time to release and allow whatever's there to come in. If it doesn't come in in a day or two days or a week, it doesn't matter. Don't energize on what's no longer passionate. Don't energize on what's no longer an idea of effortless. If it's effort, let it go and start to be that. Start to be the effortless God that you are and stay with the passion. See, you guys are always passion. It's the same idea as Bashar say, you're always 100% trusting. It's just what filter you're putting it through. You're always passion. It's just what you're being passionate in. If your passion is not to do the dishes, don't do the dishes until it's passion. And then that moment is not doing a chore. It's doing an idea of passion. It's co-creating with the moment. 
and then it becomes effortless and a chore never is a chore that's why when you go to work if you're not having a good time with work don't fucking go to work your relationship has to change with that you're still going to have work it's going to be passion though right now you guys constitute the idea of abundance so you're going to still get paid one way or the other and that's okay because that's God. That's what it is now. It's the collective. And soon money will go away in you know, the next 100, 150 years, maybe even 200 years. Who knows? And there's just going to be a monetary exchange of, of, of values, you know, of expressions. And, and, and these things will be valued as that. Just like you guys value gold, backing money. That's why someone hands you $10. You know it's valuable at the store. So it's the same thing. Your value, your present self-worth will be expressed in an idea of a passion. And someone goes, I want you for that and then they give you whatever they have in exchange and of course you know food and, and shelter is nothing you guys are so focused on food and shelter but you have enough food to feed the entire world and you have enough land to have everyone at least have a thousand acres per person on this planet <laughs> to have their own idea place but of course you don't want to do that you like to live close to each other anyways so all of that will be taken care of and then you'll get to express I think it was in the next generation when Picard said that we spend our time exploring the possibilities of, of self-exploration and, and, and uh, devoting time to uh, uh, betterment of the self, you know, and that's great, you know, it's, it was just fucking phenomenal. So you guys are, you guys are rocking and infinite possibilities, my God, you're out there expressing. Do it in the way that has continued to be effortless. And, and when it doesn't work for you, let it go because you don't have to maintain. Because when you maintain an image, you keep yourself in the same state of frequency. And you are so much bigger than that. Find it by letting go and trusting. Booyah. I know, right? Good. <laughs> What's up, Karen? You're welcome, darling. Where did Karen go? Oh, my mic was not unmuted. I know. I was just talking away. Okay. I know. You're just bleh. Bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> Julie says that she reverse channels, which means she pulls energy when it comes out of other people's mouths at random in conversation. Um, and, and she wants to know how to how to um, manage this deliberately. I, I never knew the term reverse channeling. No. So give me the explanation one more again, and I'm going to look at the... I asked her. Vibration. She says, I reverse channel, pull through specific energy, which comes out of others' mouths at random in conversation, a specific energy to communicate with me. Mm, I would say no. I, I would say that you're not going to pull anything out of anybody and make them say something. That's their free will choice to say something from the intuitive point of view. Uh, it sounds like a structure to me, but play with it and see where it goes. Maybe but it's never... more like you just, um, you know how sometimes when you're, when you have a question that you need answered and then. Right. Then the co-create the... moment gives it to you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so maybe it's yeah. more that. But that's maybe the psyche, the... but the, that's the psyche of the co-created moment. That's why like when you're in business meetings and there's some arrogant guy trying to make everyone think of something, but if the, the master that allows it to become, let's say a moment then all of a sudden the epiphanies come flying out all over the place. Right. Yeah. Right. That's God allowed to be open, honest. Right. Yeah, that's right. it. You're right, Karen. That's it. God, what a okay. little master. Cammy <laughs> <laughs> asks a question. She says, is there an extensive hybridization between two species, for example, humans and Zetas? Will this mix the contents have and huge structures? huge amount of Zetas and, 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 and uh, humans. Yeah, you have the Yael, for God's sakes, and you have uh, the Essasani, and there's other species as well. And there's versions of those species that are very humanoid and not so humanoid, you know, uh, you know, uh, in appearances. Yeah, there's, I don't know if I would call it extensive, uh, because that's a measurement motif, but it is what it is. And the Arcturians are, are out there doing their thing with it. And, uh, you know, incubations and natural births and a whole bunch of different things of, of playing with the hibernization. It's, it's great because you guys don't have Bashar without it, you know, and he's fun. <laughs> Thank you. You know, he's really a good time. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, do you know, this is very true. When I, when I uh, go, when I'm ready to channel and uh -huh. when I, when I do my little meditation toning, mm -hmm. Right at the moment before Theo starts Theos. talking, mm -hmm. Theos, yeah, and I make that connection, 
right before they talk and they're very mellow, you know, Sure. but there's always this, hello, good day, the energy that sort of comes in. And I'm always, it's like, I must pass like in my journey towards them. I must sort of pass by that energy because I hear that. Hi. Who, ha. Can you know I tell I, you, can I, can I tell you what that is? Yeah. It's not your journey to them. Yeah. Theos is an interpretation that you are seeing Theos as. Well, Theos, see, Theos is me. Yeah. I understand that, but yeah. there's more to Theos and that was portions that you're, hi, how are you? Right. Yeah. That's yeah. also Theos. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because there's, I, I, it's yeah. like I go, it's like, but for, because for me, I sort of ride this sort of energy wave into their vibration. That's the way I see sure. it. And right at the moment before they come out, there's this, also this huge, like, hi, uh, uh, like the, yeah. like the Bashar That's kind of, good day. If I were to pop it good out day. there, that. <laughs> 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 exactly. It's so potential. I think we're coming up to the end. I don't see any more questions, and maybe you want to um, you want to leave us no. with some great I words think of wisdom. It, I think you guys got a lot of wonderful little nuggets in here, and you know mm -hmm. it, it, it it's up to you to what to do with it. And see, I'm like a, I'm like this apple orchard farmer. Okay, I go and I okay. get my apples and I go up to the, to the edge of the my property and I put down the apples on the edge of the road in a whole bunch of basket. And at the end of the day, I go and pick up my baskets. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many ba apples are gone or who, do, who took what. It doesn't matter, but they're free. So that's an offering that we give and you get to do what they want. So all this idea, go back, listen to it. Don't do anything with it. It's all up to you. Just know this one thing that you get to choose and that is exquisite. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> And David is begging in the chat for one quick question. Quick, quick, short, quick. <laughs> okay. Hi, hi, Roxanne. I was. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask to see if you wanted to come to New Mexico for dinner sometime to hang out. Uh, yeah. Why don't you get with Roxy afterwards? Where are you at, New Mexico? Albuquerque. Oh, you're in Albuquerque. So we have to drive El Paso and then up and then over. Yeah, maybe on the way to Sedona. Time to go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know Roxy on Facebook? Not yet. Uh, do you have Roxy's email? No. Okay. You got a pen? I'll yeah. type it in the chat if you say it. Oh, yeah. R. Swainhart. R S W A I N H A R T at Gmail. Lots of Christmas emails now. Yep. R. <laughs> Swainhart, gmail.com. Give her a little email, and then we'll hook it up. <laughs> All right, cool. And we'll play because we love to play. Okay. All right, I think that's about it. You guys good? I'm good. Very good. All right, I'm going to zip out of here and bring Roxy back. We love you guys. Rock your world. Me too. Namaste. Hi, guys. Woo! Hi. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's never what? any words <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's always right there Sylvester had a pickle sandwich in the middle of the I know he's like hey Roxy you got some pickles and I said yeah hold the whole thing <laughs> Get those pickles. oh man that was exquisite yeah. yeah so there you go awesome thank you so very much if if you want to end with a blessing or someone in the chat can end with a blessing yeah, I think that. Um, you guys, uh, let me uh, tell you, odysseyofascension.com. Can you put that in there? Yeah, uh, odysseyofascension.com. Yeah, that's my new website from the old Wix website. I got an odysseyofascension.com one now. Oh, cool. It's all one word. And then Odyssey of Ascension on YouTube. Check out the channelings if you like. And we just got some product. I got T-shirts and mugs. I'm so happy. I got little things that say Odyssey. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. O D no, it's O D Y S S E Y. Oh, excuse me. O D Y S S E Y E. No, okay. S S E Y and then of ascension. Just change the E to a Y. There you go. O D Y S S E Y of Ascension dot com. Yep, bingo. There it is. Com. Cool. So if you want to get a hold of me that YouTube. way or my email, yeah. let me know. I okay, perfect. Um, and do you have anything coming up that people can participate in? You do like a ongoing class, don't you, or not? Yeah, you I have online? the slide class, the Sylvester class 
that is uh, uh, that takes place four days a week, uh, twice on Monday and Wednesday, and twi uh, one time on Tuesday and Thursday. So six classes, um, four days a week, and we do it on the Zoom platform, and that's where we just really get really. <laughs> I mean, we had Nostradamus in, we had JFK in, we had uh, who else do we have? We had Alan Watts, uh, Lester Leonard Nimoy. Um, Bruce Lee, <laughs> we just start doing all these requests, and oh my God, they're so fascinating. Wow. Um, Nostradamus was in, and we did um, we did this thing called Dream Sweepers. We were in part of someone's dream, you mm. know. We we channeled ourselves into a dream, and it was just so fun. Plus, of course, we have all the uh, you know like Achilles and Osiphius and Ophiuchus and Sly and all these different teachers that come in and uh, just just teach us, and and, and it's. It's brutally wonderful. It's we man, and you see the lives change. It's just magic to to find these people, and we all get together and we we tell each other the truths, and we 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 eradicate anything that keeps us dark, and it's just wonderful what we're doing. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, I my God. So yeah, slight slight class. Yeah, yeah. If you ever want to pop in, let me know. I'll send you the link, Karen. Absolutely. Okay, I would definitely. We have, love to such, do that. We have oh. such a good time. So check that it. out. That's under uh, teachings on, on their uh, private teachings, I think it's called. Um, and that's it. So, yeah. All right. Odysseyofascension.com. And also you can find Odyssey of Ascension on the YouTube channel. Yeah. And, she, and Roxy's putting out Facebook too. a couple, yep. couple uh, three to five videos a week, I think, you've got coming out. Uh, usually two videos, and then I throw in a Sly class now and again, you know. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So there's there's a lot of material. It's got like almost 556, I think 556 videos right now. Very so good. there's a lot to play with if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, uh, yes, and just for everyone, this has been Human Colony. This is uh, humancolony.org or hucolo.org. And if you're interested in joining the Ascension website, uh, web shop, web, good Lord, web. Webinar. It no, Ascension work. Yeah. Workshop. Workshop, in, yeah. <laughs> in Sedona, Sedona on February 1st through the 6th. You can go to hucolo.org and sign up. And if you want to be in the room so you can ask questions directly and talk to whomever's being channeled, then you can also do that through hucolo.org. So, yeah. All right. So Blessings. Who Who's going to give a blessing? Who wants to do I was it? Gonna say, what about the Reiki class that's going to be today? Well, it's it's today, and I think the sign up is closed for it. Okay. But you, you can also find out about that on hucolo.org. Okay, very good. Thank you for that, though. Yeah, do you want to give the uh, closing blessing then, Christine? Um, mine would just be blessed be all. Well, there you go. <laughs> there it is. That's enough. <laughs> that is, I mean, what else is there? That's it. I love it. <laughs> blessed be all. Blessed be all. All right. Booyah. Thank you. Much love to you, Roxy. So wonderful Much to be love. with you again. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye all. Mwah. Bye. Hit the button. <laughs> Not your button. I meant oh. the turn off the, the stream. <laughs> Okay, well, I don't know. Maybe I could turn it off. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs>